introduction, Kathy. Good morning, everyone. Isn't it a lovely morning here today? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, President Deb Seaman, Auburn Chamber members, APS Superintendent Dr. Chamberlain, the sponsors, Auburn High staff, proud parents, relatives, and of course, the incredible scholarship recipients of the class of 2024. It is my honor to spend this morning celebrating all of you. Let's give another round of applause for the seniors. Can everyone hear me in the back? Okay, great. I'm thrilled to be here. I was so excited when Jackie Farron and Jeff Labonde invited me to be the keynote speaker here today that I called my mom in India and woke, up, woke her up in the middle of the night. <laughs> She's a school teacher, so I asked her, Mom, I have a challenging task and I need your help with it. How do I hold the attention of teenagers first thing in the morning for 15 whole minutes before they finish their breakfast? And she said, oh, that's easy. Just entertain them with stories, tell them stories. And I said, okay. And she said, but, but, whatever you do, do not embarrass yourself by telling the story how for 33 years collectively you went to school and then college and then pursued masters and another masters in computer science and business administration, only to give it all up to draw pictures all day. <laughs> She said, don't romanticize your peculiar career choices as the seniors look onward on their academic journey. But I digress. Amidst the celebration for seniors, let's not forget our cheerleaders, my cheerleaders sitting right there, <laughs> to the teachers, mentors, and school staff who believed in their potential, to the parents, loved ones, relatives who stood by the seniors through their triumph and setbacks, it's your day to enjoy this moment. So everyone knows moms are always right, right? Oh, yeah. So I decided to take my mama's advice and today I'm gonna to tell you two stories. No more. So the first story, my first story is called Labels and it starts at my birth. On the day I was born, my hospital wristband read, baby girl. That was my first label. By the time I was your age seniors, I had acquired a few more labels, daughter, student, athlete, and my favorite label, artist. Like you, around the age of 17, I was also gearing up for college admissions. You should know, my dad is a rocket scientist. No, really, he's a NASA rocket scientist. <laughs> and it does not take another rocket scientist to figure out that at the very least he expected his, his only child to pursue an engineering degree. So while I was dreaming of getting a bachelor's in fine arts and a BFA and maybe an M MFA later, in real life I was applying to engineering colleges and then I was accepted into one. Four years of undergrad school later, I was labeled engineer, all the while still wondering about that label artist and what if. Now these were the 90s for you guys, it was the previous millennia, and um, this was in India. So of 70 graduating computer engineers, there were merely four girls. So my engineer label got upgraded to female engineer. <laughs> so you think, this is where she tells us that she's graduated and she's going to start painting now. Nope, wait, my mom, my mom and dad had bigger plans for me. So they gently nudged me into higher education. And um, they wanted me to pursue higher education and they gently nudged me all the way from India, 8,000 miles away to the United States. So here I was at, um, in Worcester at WPI. I came to collect the big academic labels, masters. Um, however, while living here, I unexpectedly received labels like non-resident alien, person of color, immigrant. These labels seemed unfamiliar. And while they accurately described who I was at the time, these were not labels that I worked towards. They didn't represent my persona. 
Meanwhile, that artist label was slowly fading away in the dark. Fast forward 10 years. I have new labels now. I'm an analyst. I was a homeowner in Auburn, love this town, a spouse, and a mom. And while mom will forever be my favorite label, I was still wondering, what happened to that artist? Where did she go? So, in 2014, after receiving my second master's diploma, and while working full-time in tech, as many of, of some of you do, um, and while raising two little kids, I finally stopped wondering what if. I stopped wondering and I embarked on uh, my journey as a full-time artist. Thanks in a great part to the education I received in technology and management, I was able to market and sell my artwork online and show in galleries, all while working in my home studio right here in Auburn. This year, I'm celebrating uh, my 10-year anniversary as a full-time practicing artist. We all come into this world with labels, and along the way, we accumulate more labels. These labels are assigned to us because of one, who we are, and two, what we do. Your, if your labels don't define you, there is no right or wrong time to do the work to change them. Your every experience matters and helps shape the future you. I want to sum this first story up um, with the words of my idol, the tech legend Steve Jobs. I quote, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be tra trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinkings. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition, end quote. This brings me to my second and last story that I called Unexpected Learning. While in the process of switching careers all those years ago, a 17-year-old at my gym said, your art is cool, I like it, but you have no way to show it online. And I was like, what? No, I have a website, I have a blog. Um, she said, I think you should try this new mobile app um, that puts all these pictures in a matrix and there is no text distraction. So, like any sane adult would do, my first instinct was to completely ignore what she said, dismiss her, and stick to the then super cool world of blogging and static websites. We all know that those are dinosaurs now. But instead, I was polite. I pretended to be interested, and I said, young human, give me these details. And she said, I predict that in the future, this app is going to be the app for artists to promote their work and for creators. Well, that is the story of how I set up my Instagram account all those years ago. And all seven of my loved ones followed me. <laughs> <laughs> Present day, 40,000 followers later, hundreds of art collectors and thousands of paintings sold. I can tell you that was some solid piece of advice from someone not old enough to vote yet. <laughs> So the life lesson here is that you have to be receptive to new thoughts and ideas. And once you do that, you have to follow them up with actions. You always choose, or I think that we should always choose progress over perfection. As Nike says, just do it. Don't wait for perfection, just get started. And you can always work on building, editing, and growing as you go along in your journey. Everything I have learned about showing up, I've learned from my dog, Macintosh. Each morning when I'm up at 4 a.m., Mac, begrudgingly, drags his body off his doggy bed and parks it right next to me where I'm drinking my chai. With big puppy dog eyes and his unfailing dedication to his occupation, he has received table scraps almost every day of his life. <laughs> Over the years, this has amounted to a lot of human food and a respectable doggy bag. As a self-taught artist, sometimes I am debilitated by imposter syndrome. When I'm debating if I should approach a gallery and that seems intimidating and I'm ready to give up, 
I asked myself, Piali, what would Macintosh do? What would my dog do? And the answer is clear, crystal clear. If you don't try, if you don't show up, there's a 100% chance of failure. But not giving up automatically give, gets you in the 50% chance of success. Mac would always show up, and therefore so do I. 20 years from now, you will be disappointed by the things that you did not try or do than the things that you did. I quote Nelson Mandela when I say the greatest glory in living lives is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. I guess this story um, sums up in a way where I want to say that success is not always the key to happiness, but happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. Seniors, with these scholarships come not only financial support, but also a vote of confidence in your abilities to make a positive impact on this world. Whether you choose to pursue college, as many of you are, enter the workforce, or embark on a different path altogether, never forget that the power, to hold, power you hold to affect change and shape the future. Congratulations, well-deserving deserving seniors of class of 2024, on this momentous achievement. May your futures be bright, your hearts be brave, and your dreams know no bounds. As early graduation presents, I brought you fine art productions of my floral paintings. I won't embarrass you by asking you to come up here, but please grab one of the um, prints before you leave, if you like. And all the very best for your upcoming graduation. 16 days away, I think. Thank you very much. <laughs>